I've been doing Morphicon since the very beginning, and I said, this year, I want to be on more panels. I want to moderate. I want to talk to people. So, Scott, in his infinite wisdom, said, Neil, you will moderate villainy. And so, if you don't mind... Let's give it up for some of the friendliest people in Pasadena and some of the worst people in the universe. I'm also excited because right over here we have Rita in person and Rita voice. And, you know, we're going to have to muppet them a little bit later, I think. Do a little impromptu. So can we start on the far end and... uh, In this case, I think we'll do gentlemen first. Yeah, I am completely honored to be up here with all these amazing ladies. This is insane. So here's the rule. Okay. I want you to give us your name. I want you to give give us your character that you're here for. And if you can, hopefully, the most villainous line you can remember from your character. And if you can't, then default to any old villainous line. You know, something like... Do you still hear the sheep, Clarice? <laughs> All right. Please, You, know what's, you Colby. know what's really funny is I know the people who watch my season knows exactly, I know what you want me to say, so I'm going to do it for you, but it's a crazy line. Do you, do you guys remember? I feel like, okay. Yeah, exactly. He got it right. You're a villain. I you know. can go ahead and make the left turn. <laughs> But um, your name is? Yes, my name is Colby, and I played Blaze on Power Rangers Beast Morphers. <laughs> and the line? Is that what the other thing was? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tronix! Yeah. Whatever that was. <laughs> Hello, my name is Leon Ramirez. I played Roxy in Power Rangers Beast Morphers. Oh my gosh, what was it? I mean, I had several, but I would say one of my favorites was uh, Pathetic Human. Pretty much always a good fallback. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sabrina Liu, and I was Scorpina on the second season <laughs> of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And um, how about... As long as his little friend doesn't get in the way, the plan should go perfectly. <laughs> and I'm Amy Roll. I played Trikina on Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. And I would say my most villainous line is, hello, I'm evil. I lied. <laughs> Hello, my name is Carla Perez, and I played Rita Repulsa. And she had a lot of famous lines, but I'll say, um, after 10,000 years, it's time to conquer Earth. She says it much better, though. She looks much better. (laughs) She looks much better, though. (laughs) She's the beauty. Uh, I'm the voice of the readers, and my name is Barbara Goodson, and I guess uh, one of my lines that you may have heard is, uh, I have such a headache! (laughs) Interestingly enough, Barbara didn't actually have to be in the booth whenever she recorded. She could be (laughs) in the lobby... Three buildings away. It was remote recording before yeah, and, COVID. And we, we, they picked it up just fine. So, uh, uh, you know, if anybody has a question, please feel free to raise your hand. We have some incredible talent up here. And, of course, you're not just limited to their Power Ranger careers, okay? I know we've got a lot of stuff represented up here. I saw a hand from a young or a young-looking person out there. I'm not wearing my glasses, for all I know. You're just small. (laughs) What is your question? (laughs) Who, me? 
Well, here's the thing. I was Diabolico in Lightspeed Rescue, and as everybody knows, the Power Rangers failed to save Mariner Bay. That was all me. <laughs> but I'm used to being like their underlings. I mean, I remember I was watching HBO a couple of months ago and Mighty Morphin, uh, the movie came on and I sat there and I went, oh, that would have been really fun to work on. And then I heard my voice go. And I went, oh, right. That was really fun to work on. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, uh. I, I hope that satisfied your urge. Excellent. Um, who here played their villain as the hero of the season? That's what I want to know. Yeah, who approached it like the Power Rangers were encroaching on your business? There we go. All right. That's what I'm saying. They're just brats in pajamas. Come on. We I, still think, some... I still think it would have been fun to have Sabrina slash Scorpina keep coming back and keep fooling Adam every time as Aisha just gets more and more upset at the density of Adam toward, toward Sabrina slash Scorpina. I could just slightly change my name. I'd be Serena. I'd be Selena. <laughs> Fooled every time. That would have been so easy. <laughs> I think we've got season 32 in the can. <laughs> I love it. I saw somebody with a hand over here. Um, what was your favorite episode of Lightspeed? Does, do you have a favorite scene or a favorite episode? And I'll even switch it up a little bit. Was maybe there one that was fun to work on or one that was really fun to watch? Because we all know that there are scenes that are a pain to work on, but then you see it later and go, oh, it worked. Yes. <laughs> So what do you got, Colby? You know, one thing I'll say, like, uh, with Liana as well, is, like, it was really fun to watch our characters develop together because when we got to New Zealand, we had no idea who they were going to be. And even, we didn't know each other either, yeah, so it was so we're a like development figuring of friendship, out, too. Yeah, like, our dynamic as a friendship and as a duo and what is their relationship. And then, you know, a lot of you guys have been asking, but yeah, by like season two, it was just like solid and the writers were like riding with us. So I don't know. I feel like to answer, it might like be a vague answer, but like season two, maybe where we're like way more comfortable in like our relationship and like the snarkiness and like the back and forth, but we're still working together. So anyway, that was just a really special like, you know, moment in and that. Coming off of that, um, season two, episode two, um, <laughs> It was when um, our new colors emerged, and that's whenever we were revealed as the robots. Um, that whole just walk up slow mo, just the strut in was just perfect. So I feel like that moment was probably one of my favorites. That was good. This is probably the easiest question for me since I was only actually in one episode. And so my favorite has got to be Goldar's, vice versa. And then um, season two, episode something, not quite sure. Let's say middle somewhere. And um, But it was really neat because um, the whole plot, every single thing revolved around, you know, my trying to outsmart and catch rangers. And I don't know how I failed because I really, really should have had them. But anyways, <laughs> apparently that's how the plot goes. So, um, but I would say my favorite part was doing the, um, the martial arts kata and deciding that that was the way to Adam's heart was to, uh, you know, impress him with my martial arts skills. Cause that's, that's really advice to all of you looking to woo somebody, right? You got to just get out there and do your do your big fan kicks and, and things like that. So I'd say that was probably one of my favorite scenes. Plus, it was neat because Steve Cardenas, all the actual really great martial artists on that episode helped me put that together when I got there because they said, okay, now you'll do your kata. I'm, I'll do my what's you huh? So uh, it, that was really nice that, that they helped me put that together. And then I didn't know that I was supposed to make sounds when I do karate because I was coming from more of a dancer background. And so my mouth was closed. And then they called me in a week later and said, so now you need to add your martial arts sounds. And like, hi -ya, hi -ya! And I'm like, you realize my mouth is closed in all this footage, right? And they said, oh, right, just do that when you face the back. 
And then when you face the and when you face the front, you'll have to make sounds you can do with your mouth closed. So if you watch that episode, now you all have to go watch the episode, right? Now. Uh, if you watch the episode, every time I face the front, all you hear is, <laughs> and then I turn around, and you go, I can't, big, big uh, action. So that's my favorite part. Okay, my favorite episode is probably also was the hardest episode to film. Um, it was Heir to the Throne, where Trakina gets trained by Villamax out in the desert. And I've gone from being a spoiled brat to like a, a bad warrior, so a baddie warrior. So I um, did all of my own things in that except the one hand push up. And um, when they actually, I mean, it was it was difficult. It was in the desert. It was physically taxing. But the way they edited everything and then just the story arc, you know, it was important. So did, that, did you film that at Vasquez Rocks? Is that where you went? Um, no, this was out in um, like a dry lake, lake bed. Which is now probably. But I also did. I also have a story about Vasquez Rocks. That wasn't my favorite, but I, I did call on the stunt double for that because I was like, I might die. Yeah, and she was willing to do it, and I wasn't. So, <laughs> literally hanging off the rock, the big point, thing, okay. or whatever. I was like, oh, no, but I did all the other stuff. Yeah, at the one in, in Heir to the Throne. Yeah, you got to remember where. Well, at least where the some of us worked. Uh, it's like the suburbs now. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. paved yeah. over so all Vasquez of it. Vasquez Rocks is like that now. No, no, no. Vasquez Rocks isn't. But I'm it's talking about like when other back in the old days when yeah. we were up in Santa Clarita, oh, it was yeah, basically yeah. the building in open fields. <laughs> right. And now it's like tech companies and right. really expensive houses. Exactly. And what was your favorite? Yes, uh, I would say, well, it's between the wedding and probably Countdown to Destruction. But um, I think I'll go with Countdown to Destruction because it was the first time that I got to play uh, Rita out of the Rita costume. So, you know, she was a real person. And also, the first time I got my hands dirty fighting Diva Talks. <laughs> so I would say it's, it's between those two. And I would say it's the wedding because when I did Machiko Soga, uh, the voice of Rita, the, the original voice, uh, they ran out of footage, so I was out of work. So then they had Lord Zed come in, and he was too scary, and they brought Rita back. And I, uh, one of the first episodes was, well, it wasn't the first, but it was the wedding, but I got to uh, have a job. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and it was, a, it was a wedding, and weddings are fun, so that was it. You know, I, I, I'll I'll say my favorite episodes uh, were the ones where I learned the most, which was basically I was part of the loop group when I first started working uh, on Power Rangers, and they would basically have four or five of us, and they would show us the fight scene one time, and then we would go clockwise and pick up different people, either running in and fighting or getting their asses kicked. And, you know, almost 30 years later, I'm still using that training for the basis of a lot of what I do of like watching scenes and picking things up. And, you know, I do it for video games all the time and I still have directors telling me, they go, oh, you're good at this. As I, well, you can thank Scott Page Pagder and uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, let uh, we, I believe we have a, a, another villainess that has joined us. Is that correct? So let's see. Here's what you owe us. Hi. Uh, your name, your character that you are here for, mm -hmm. a villainous line, your favorite scene, and I need that all in a song. <laughs> and dance, and dance. Hello, my name is Adelaide Kane. Uh, no, I can't do this whole thing. <laughs> <coughs> let's my give it up for the try, though. Come on. Um, hi guys, I'm sorry I was late, I got lost and then I was shoving a burger in my face because I didn't know where I was going. Um, I'm Adelaide Kane, I played Tanaya Seven on Power Rangers RPM. Thank you, thank you. Uh, a villainous lie. Fuck. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I think sorry. that's pretty villainous. Nicely said. Nicely said. 
For those of you who are under 18, she said frog. <laughs> cool. If you're going to let that slide, I'm going to roll with it. Um, and what was it? Favorite scene? Or episode, yeah. And this or could episode. be something that you enjoyed working on or watching later. You know, maybe it was kind of because we had one story that was like it was a pain, but ooh, did it look good on screen? Um, I, I would say for RPM, my favorite scenes collectively were any in which I got to wear normal clothes. <laughs> because I wore that purple metallic spandex catsuit and those heels and that visor and that wig every single day. And only once every other episode would I get to wear like normal people clothes. And then the cast that were playing the Rangers, they would complain all day when they had to have their Power Rangers suits on. And I'd just be standing there like, this is the fourth day in a row that I've been in spandex. You know nothing. Uh, so anything I wear, I got to wear like jeans. It was just so wonderful. I sweated a, a lot less. I smelled a lot better on those days. So, yeah. Hello. Yeah, you Who is answer. it? Sir, did you have a question? Why don't we start with Barbara? Actually, actually, before, before they had Carla, they gave me a shot as Rita, and I wore that costume, and they said, nah, we're going to go with someone who looks like the original Rita, but a younger version. Thank God. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> I wore it once, and my neck still hurts from that head thing and those and the boobies. Oh yeah, boobies. The boobies Carla and the head thing. Boobies. I'm. Thank you, Carla, for getting. I look marvelous. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, what was it like wearing the costume? Oh. Yeah, just like she said, but, you know, I had to wear it all the time. It was just heavy. What people don't realize, oh, thank you so much. I feel so good. <laughs> but what people don't realize is that costume was original from Super Sentai. And uh, they used to make the costumes out of metal and a dense rubber. So, unfortunately, my headpiece was a metal helmet covered with hair. <laughs> So it was about almost 15 pounds, and then my staff was uh, dense rubber, like I was carrying around a rubber tire the whole time. And then the cones, the booby cones, <laughs> the same thing, it was heavy. So I would say I was carrying around 20, 25 pounds every time I was filming. So, In fact, I, I was 5'11". Um, <laughs> and and lost, lost a foot just by wearing it once. Yeah, it, it weighed her down quite a bit. <laughs> but yeah, luckily I was very young and I could handle it back then <laughs> to carry all that. And that line, oh, no, I have a headache. Oh, it's true. It's true. <laughs> Every day, same thing. So my costume, as you guys know, the, the, the holes that were in that, um, created a really ugly tan line that I had to sport for about two years um, after filming in the desert for all those all those episodes. Um, and I tried everything to get rid of it. It just never did. But um, my staff was also very heavy. And they wanted me to, of course, do all kinds of, like, fancy things and moves with it. And it, I don't know what the actual weight was, but it was there was something solid and very heavy on the inside. And, like, that glass tip or whatever. It was extremely heavy. So... Um, I couldn't do all the, I wasn't yeah. strong enough to do all the things that they wanted me to do. And I will say the other thing, you guys, if you know, the very first time Trakina was revealed, I had a green, like, um, praying mantis type suit on, which was very cool. And it was custom made for me. I had to get a mold made of my body and all that kind of stuff. It was a long process, but well worth it because it was beautiful. It's art, literally. But it was so stiff and heavy oh. to they wanted me to run and jump and chase rangers and run away from rangers and stuff like that, and I really couldn't. So that's why they made the black suit with all the holes in it, because it was so much more, um, I could be, I was free to move around and stuff. And they say that as battle armor for um, special occasions. Um, but my favorite form, and also when 
when I fell into the cocoon and merged with Deviat, and I came out and I had some of his pieces, like the long dreadlocks and the arm that had a gun built in. I thought that was the coolest form of trachina and those crazy contacts. Um, they told me when I got the contacts made, only leave them in for four hours max. And I was like, oh, okay, no problem. What about, like, I have these like long dagger nails how do I get them out and they're painted and everything and they're like oh the makeup artist team there they know how to deal with that and I got there and they're like we've never done this for anybody you have to do it yourself so we just left them in for like a 15 16 hour day and that whole end of my season or whatever with the whatever um, the destruction part where Trakina became unhinged I was getting like they had um, a clear center with no prescription, but there was like veins and color and all this kind of thing around the edges. So it's almost like your camera phone trying to focus all the time and not being able to focus. So I literally had a migraine for about six weeks and the unhinged part was just Amy. It was just real, I, that was just me. So it was easy, there was no acting involved. Wow, mine was really comfortable and light. No, I don't know. I just, I think I have to thank the uh, original Japanese actress. She probably paved the way, but since she did all those stunts, it had to be relatively light. And I might just, you know, have hit my head, but my memory of it was it was actually quite movable. She had to do a lot of running and jumping. I don't know why they didn't model yours, like, after that. that it was a, um, but it was the... Uh, the the helmet piece was a little warm, but I'll be honest, I used to dance in parades at Disneyland, and I was wearing a lot more weight in that, for sure, dancing for 20 minutes, so um, with really heavy stuff. So this, the, I, I think I lucked out after listening to this. So, sorry, but also I think it, it was nice because um, our callback, so after we auditioned, we all read the lines, and we did our callback of the two of us was to do the lines again, but in the suit. So we both had to try on the suit. So it was a very, I know you're all too young to remember the Brady Bunch, but it was a very Johnny Bravo moment of just fitting the suit. So that was um, pretty much, that was, it was nice. It was a nice suit. And they asked, do you have any questions? And I've said this before, but I, my one and only question wasn't, when does this shoot? How much does this pay? Thank goodness I didn't ask that. No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, it was, will there be an action figure? And so now, here we are 30 years almost later, we're getting some good Scorpina action figures, so finally. <laughs> so Colby, yeah, hey. we had like the same suit. Yeah. So how was it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, I think just wardrobe was just over it, but it was like, if we had to go to the bathroom or like we had to, it was a it was full process. Oh. Like. It's it's the gloves, and the then it's the vest, vest. yeah. So it was a process, but overall, it was relatively comfortable. <laughs> um, it was movable, yeah. it was stretchy, yeah. um, not too heavy. Uh, I do remember we didn't have mobility raising our arms past a certain extent. The, the wings, wings. everybody the knows the wings. Um, but, yeah, overall, I, I liked it. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. And then obviously we were so lucky we had also the morphed versions, you know, for however much we were in this suit. But, you know, it was, it's better than that, honestly. We had spandex. It's okay. But then you're yeah. in New Zealand humidity. So, I mean, it, yeah, wearing no clothes yeah, is also hot. So it's fine. The worst part about it, our suits were almost all black. So if there was any summer days, we were disgusting. Yeah. So. But this is a good question because really all of our costumes are just epic and like, the most in every way possible. So yes, it's just, it was always an experience. Always. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> look, I, I got to wear a, wear a spandex cat suit all day. Those extra like pieces of armor were made of molded foam and they had press studs. So we had to spend sort of 10 minutes every morning clipping them into place, but they weren't heavy. So all in all, it was like pretty comfortable. Um, it wasn't too bad at all, I would say. It was very hot. My poor um, stunt woman was so lovely, but I, I had a, a very different figure to her. So when she'd have to squeeze into my suit, she would have to wear layers and layers and layers of butt and hip pads and uh, like three bras with padding in them. Because she was you know, very slender and extremely athletic. 
and I had never worked out a day in my life. <laughs> so they really had to sort of sculpt her to, to look more like me. But I'd say the one, the one just like little tiny bone to pick that I had with that costume was the visor that they had me wearing. I couldn't see through that visor. It was spray painted on the inside. <laughs> it was spray painted on the inside to give it that like, ah, oh, yeah, tinted glass effect. It was not clear. It was not even like a little bit opaque, like shadows and darkness, no. I couldn't see through it at all. So I had to do all of my fight scenes with like a sliver of visibility underneath. I had to memorize all my choreography and then do the fights and pray I didn't kick anyone in the head. Um, and I think I only did that like maybe once, not very hard, um, but it was, a, that was a, it was really interesting. It was really interesting. And I fell over a bunch of times as well because it's really hard to fight when you are blind. All right, I'm gonna take a quick break before we go to the next. I, I, I pulled up some of the most villainous lines in Hollywood history. So I'm gonna come down the row and I'm gonna show you the line. I'm gonna ask you to read it. You can do it any way you want. You don't have to do an imitation of the movie or whatever. And then you tell everybody what the movie is, okay? All right, so. No, no, nobody has to guess, but I don't want to color. Let's start. Wow. Yeah. I like that. Number I, six. Are you picking on me because I was late? Oh. Okay. I mean, I have all the characteristics of a human being. You know, blood, flesh, skin, hair, but not, not, a, not a single clear identifiable emotion, except for greed. And disgust. It's American Psycho. <laughs> What's a good one? What, number eight? Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. It should be. Human beings are a disease, a cancer of this planet. You're a plague. And we are cure. The Matrix. Don't you turn your back on me, Harry Potter. I want you to look at me when I kill you. I want to see the light leave your eyes. that my coffee isn't here? Has she died or something? And that's um, the devil meets, where's Prada? It's kryptonite, Superman. A little souvenir from the old hometown. I spared no expense to make you feel right at home. And that's from Superman, Lex Luthor. You know what? 
Who cares if you never see that? Go with 24. That's just horrible. 24. Okay. I'll give you a hint. He's an agent. Yeah, like a talent agent. Hollywood's that kind of evil. That's a big oof. The, the scary kind. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you are nothing. If you were in my toilet, I wouldn't bother flushing it. My bath mat means more to me than you. Swimming with sharks. <laughs> Twenty-five, baby. <laughs> I'll blow it for you right now. It's from Training Day. <laughs> okay, let's go. Her and Denzel, you know. How you want it, dog? <laughs> Closed casket. Remember that fool in the wheelchair? How'd you think he got there? <laughs> All righty, so Jennifer, nice of you to join us. Hi, yeah, come on over here. Take my chair. Give it up for Jen Yen, please. All right, so here's what you need to do to get you caught up, all right? We're gonna, I'll, I'll give you this one here. You gotta give us your name. You gotta give us the character that you are here for, your villainous alter ego. Uh, give us a villainous line if it's not from your character, it can be from any other character, that's fine. And when you get through those three, then I'll let you know the other stuff you need to fill us in on, okay? okay so sure. that's, go ahead, ready, go. Hi, everyone, I'm Jennifer Yen, <laughs> AKA Vibra from Life Be Rescue. Say that one more time, because they're too busy going, woo. I'm Jennifer Yen, I played Vibra on Lightspeed Rescue. Lightspeed Ooh, Rescue! Destroy them all! Villainous line. Destroy them all! Nice. And what was your favorite scene and or episode to either work on or to watch? Preferably from Lightspeed Rescue. Although if you have to talk about any other show I worked on, that's fine too. Great question. I would say it's probably my first episode, Trial by Fire, because it was my first acting job and I was so nervous. And I really remember it to this day. And it was just in front of 75 people, and I didn't know what I was doing. And so I, that episode really still stays with me to this day. And it led me to you know, do other things. So I'm really thankful. And thank you guys so much for being here. All righty. And last but not least, you get to read line number 29 as evil as you can. And then when you're done, tell everybody what the movie's from. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, I'm fine. I think I'll skip this if you don't mind. No, you don't have a <laughs> choice. You're late. Well, I'm going to read it because it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, um, no, read it. Since yeah, I've been yeah, a villain. That's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. Um, I'm every nightmare you've ever had. I'm your worst dream come true. I'm everything you were afraid of. That wasn't very scary, was no, it? No, and that's not the one I wanted you to read either. I, I oh. wanted you to read oh. 29. I wanted you to be the principal from oh, okay. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay, okay. So So now you can act the living okay. heck out of it. How would you feel about another year of high school? Under my close supervision. Ooh. All right, because oh, I man. was going to read the line from It. I'm every nightmare you've ever had. I'm your worst dream come true. I'm everything you ever were afraid of. <laughs> All right, so questions, questions, percolating questions. Yes, over there. Sabrina? Oh, that was super fun, and um, you know, I think that's why I handily have a lot of uh, Scorpina lines in my in my head from getting to do her voice. And of course, during all this crazy pandemic time, 
Um, my husband carpeted a closet, and I recorded everything for the video game in my closet. Um, and that was just neat. They sent me script lines, but then also let, um, let me write lines, and I like asked people if they knew like stuff that she could say for the game, and certain things had to be like longer because it was like a, a certain move that was happening. So that was, but it was, it, it was, thank you for asking. It was a great, great thing. I love getting, actually, I am, I am constantly evil. So that's why that's so easy for me. Like it's just been so recent that I've been evil. So, um, yeah, yeah it's true. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, it was, it was great fun. And, and the neat thing is, is it used to be, you know, every once in a while you kind of get bored and you Google yourself or you look on YouTube and, I used to see like my interviews from like PMC or like panels or things like that. But now if you put Scorpina in YouTube, you get people playing the game, lots of people playing the game. And it's fun because it's still my voice saying stuff, but boy, she really kicks some booty that, so it's a good one to play just uh, so you know. Yes. <laughs> What's up? Ooh. I've only just started on Grace, so Why let's into one question. Okay. Um, challenge accepted. Okay, so the question was, do I prefer from between Teen Wolf and RPM, do I prefer my werewolf prosthetics like all that stuff? Or my Tanaya Seven outfit? You know, both are great for different reasons. Comparatively, the Tanaya outfit took way less time to put on. My prosthetics took four and a half hours. And uh, according to the prosthetic specialist, in his opinion, I was the prettiest werewolf, um, which I, of course, loved. Um, you know, oh, different strokes, different folks. I loved wearing those prosthetics. I loved being a werewolf. I loved having the claws and the fangs and like the yellow eyes. I, I loved it. So by a very narrow margin, even though it was four and a half hours in the chair at the beginning of the day and then another hour to get it all off at the end of the day, I'd have to say the Teen Wolf prosthetics. It was super fun. I loved that. You know, I'm going to ask a question for all of you based on that. Did you have any one particular piece of costume, piece of makeup, or, or a prop that helped you get into character? And for Barbara, was there any one particular line, you know, that would help you get into character? You know, it's like some of us who do impressions, it's like I've got to say, oh, bother, before I start doing Winnie the Pooh, you know? So what was the one piece? And why don't we start with Jennifer over here? Because they've been starting. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, well, okay, so, um, you know, actually, I don't know if you guys know this, but I wasn't the original Vipra. Did you guys know this? Yeah, it was somebody else. And then what happened was she was shorter and thinner than me, and I had to fit into her pants for the audition. And, um, and I could barely get into them. So, but I did squeeze into them, and I just, uh, for the, I really wanted the part, and I told the casting directors that I can do an amazing kick, and so I did the kick in these pants, and I couldn't believe it, but I think that's why I got the part, because I was able to squeeze into these pants, and I did the kick, so I think it was the pants that just reminds me, because I always had to, like, pull them up and really squeeze my stomach in, and then that was, um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, and so that I think it was the pants. Evil pants. <laughs> Evil pants. Well, it's not uh, Power Rangers, actually. It's Mother Talzin from uh, Clone Wars. Uh, okay, you've heard of it. <laughs> Star Wars, the Clone Wars. And in order to get into the Romanian voice of Mother Talzin, I had to go back to way back to when I was very young and watch the black and white Wolf uh, Man movies where uh, Maria Ospenskaya, this little old lady, would say, beware the wolf being bite. And that is how I got the job because I think George Lucas grew up on that too. 
So I think that helped me get Mother Thalson. Wow, there were so many pieces to my costume that I just can't pinpoint which one. The key, I would say uh, probably the helmet, the hair piece, because without that hair, I mean, come on. <laughs> Her hair was so ridiculous, but it, it was so much fun. And when you put it on, it's like you can't do anything but become Rita. You just like have to say taut and uh, very regal, but yet crazy at the same time. <laughs> Frankie. Yeah. So when I, in between scenes or, you know, when, when I wasn't actually on camera, I would take the hat off, the headpiece off. And it was always kind of like on the props cart or somewhere or lying around. And then when it was time for me to come, they would say, bring in the bug. And I, <laughs> then here comes the, the, the hair person to put it on me or whatever, the, the head, head piece. So when I got the head piece on, that's actually, cause I had the costume on all the time, but that was the one thing that was on and off, like off camera, on camera, just made me more comfortable. Yeah, that was literally the, that was it. That was bringing the bug and the headpiece went on and I became tricky. I definitely think like every piece has its own little thing going on with it. And it's so cool to hear all of these answers. I wish I had evil pants, to be honest, but I don't. But, oh, oh, you, oh go on. So the, uh, but I would say I really like her claw, her, um, because even sometimes when I'm sitting on panels and things and I happen to be in costume because sometimes I just throw that thing on. <laughs> Once upon a time I said, past 50, these people are not going to want to see me in that costume. But you know what? I don't care anymore, so I'm getting in costume. So anyway. <laughs> But I would tap, I would tap, I tap those little fingers, those claws, click, 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 click. So this is my plug for the photo op at five o'clock today. I'm going to wear that claw and who knows what other pieces, but, um, yeah, I would say that claw really gets you there because you're like taking your time. And also whenever you speak in a lower voice, I feel like you get a little more evil, right? Yeah, because whenever we get to hear Barbara, like all the tones in there, and it's like that high, I've, I'm just a sponge for listening to all of the talent up here, and I'm absorbing all of it, but the, the tones and the, the low notes really get you down into your into that evil part, but the high notes get you all that emotion, so it's really something to, um, I think, yeah, whatever you can find in those voices or certain lines or costume pieces or things, if you're making your own costumes and you find that piece that just makes you feel that confidence, then that's what you want to, you know, hold on to. I think that that's really key. So I think kind of with everyone, it's the final product that really just pulls everything together for the actor. Um, so, <laughs> on Beast Morphers, my character took the longest, um, and so just going through the whole hair and makeup process, um, I would say kind of Roxy's standout thing was her makeup and her hair. I don't know, it's just super fabulous all the time. Um, and so just having that completed for me was the finishing touches, and then we would just walk around without our vests and gloves on and like pants unzipped because they were tight. Um, so once everything was cinched, that was kind of when every, you know, I don't know, the switch happened um, and we were on. But I don't know, season two with the purple extensions, that, oof, that was a mental change for me. So, uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's my answer. Colby? Um, yeah, no, seriously, it's, I was actually going to say the same thing because I think it's when you get those final pieces that you're just like, okay, and you hear action, all that stuff, like you can just go right into it. But also for me, honestly, like my contouring, if anyone watched the season, <laughs> phenomenal work. I learned everything about makeup. I had no idea, and I was like, pay, oh, it was amazing. So with the smoky eye, like, I don't know, I just... I was like, this guy's on another level, his so. Hair, his hair, his hair, his hair. The hair, the hair extensions, the yellow, like, it just the full glam. Like, Blaze was really glammed up to, like, destroy some shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, no, but yeah, it's kind of all of that. It's just the little pieces put together, finally cinching the vest, can't breathe, and you're like, okay, this is what a villain feels like. You know? So, yeah. 
Maybe that's why villains are always so irritated because it takes them so long to get ready in the morning. You know? Like three hours deep, they're finally ready for villainous activities and they've only had one coffee and no breakfast. I, I, think, I think for me, um, like it, as with everybody else, it was a whole process getting into like the outfit and zipping it up and then, you know, and the clipping and the shoes and the wig and the makeup. Um, but I think for, for me, I didn't really switch on until I put my gloves on because that was my final piece. Every single day was the gloves. And that meant I was going to be smacking the shit out of people all day. <laughs> so that was kind of, that became my sort of trigger to we're in work mode. This is where we are now. Because then I couldn't play with my phone. I couldn't play on my Game Boy. I couldn't read a book. I couldn't do anything. Once the gloves were on, it was like beat down time. And there was nothing else on my mind at that point. So, yeah. Wait, what? Oh, yes. Wait, but what was the last thing you said? Mommy. <laughs> yes. She's a brand. <laughs> yeah, baby vibrates. Um, baby vibrates. Yeah. Yes, it was it was really fun, but honestly, at the time, all the heavy makeup wrecked my skin. So for majority of the time, I was really I lost my confidence a lot just because my skin was constantly bad. I don't know if you guys have just heavy, heavy makeup. But what Power Rangers gave I have a love hate relationship. Loved it. Well, I hated it because it really ruined my skin, but I loved it because it led me to do what I'm doing right now, which is I have. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I have a skincare and cosmetics line called Pure Lease in Yensa, which led me that it all started with Power Rangers. So I'm thankful. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? You're going to have to come closer. You're on the aisle. Come closer. Come closer. Stop. <laughs> Stop That's very true. What does that make blue? I I feel like blue blue is always the voice of reason. Blue is always the one who is even keeled. Blue is always the, the most emotionally stable and who kind of looks after everybody else. In my experience, with, am I wrong? Thank you, I love hearing that I'm right. <laughs> I think we've seen in every attempted villainy, you know, team up, whether, whether it's, you know, the hall of, you know, the, the hall of the satanic or whatever. Uh, eventually somebody starts to say, well, I need to be in charge. So if you think you would be the last villain standing, do me a favor on the count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three. Yeah, I think that tells you all you need to know, sir. Exactly. Not a moment's hesitation. And thank you all for picking up the clue I dropped. I appreciate it. All righty. That question back there. Wait, I've got to ask you a question. Do you actually have a dialect or is it just the distance between us? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you got to come closer. I cannot understand a bloody thing you're saying. Uh, no, let me tell you, no, no, you, no. This is the thing. You're wonderful to listen to. You're impossible to understand. Uh, 
I will translate for you to the king's English. The gentleman here was wondering, what's the pettiest thing you did? Well, or just the pettiest thing you did, just in your villainous character, yes. I, for me, it would be throwing my duffel bag at Aisha. <laughs> that was pretty, pretty petty. We were, we were already full on the ready to fight, I think, at that point. So, um, but I say, I would definitely say the pettiest thing, which was really because I was just seeing so much more success in how I was getting to Adam and that she might be a little bit of a problem. So I thought, well, I know, I'll just throw a really full duffel bag at her. <laughs> that works every time. <laughs> okay, so Roxy um, was incredibly petty, petty, so, so petty that um, I would improv a lot of shoving Scrozzle out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> And half of it didn't make the show. <laughs> so, yeah. So we had to, like, put a cap on her pettiness. A lot of it was slapping, a lot of it was shoving, and yeah. Anything else you want to own up to? I mean, I'd say the pettiest thing Tanaya did was try and make Ziggy fall in love with her with the intention of killing him later. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Poor Villamax. I just killed him for no reason after making him fall in love with him. The power of women. Do we have any everybody. other petty? The power of petty. Women. Do we have a petty? No, no, no. Okay. Farm? What do you got, Farm? Yeah, just uh, calling Lord Zed radiator face. <laughs> but it was true. <laughs> well, it's, it, it was true, but it was the attitude. And I was going to add the same. I mean, you know, she made him marry her. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. All right, one last question. Who's got the best question? Why, you must be stood up. <laughs> yes, that was all method. No, no, Carla, what was the question? So you said, did I actually lick or kiss? Kiss. Did I actually kiss him? Yes, I did. I really planted one on that radiator face. <laughs> all right, I want to remind you that all of these wonderful people will be in the hall. You can come on by, say hello. Thank you so much. Give it up for the true heroes of the Power Rangers, the villains. Remember, without the villains, you just got five kids standing around going, what are we having in lunch today? All right, take it easy. Enjoy America on 22.